As people's awareness of wellness increases, the demand for healthy cooking also increases and canola oil is now the popular option. Canola is one of the most important oilseed crops globally. The name canola comes from the words Canada and Ola which means oil. Many dietitians believe that canola oil should be considered the healthiest edible oil. Aside from vegetable oil, the solid parts of canola seed are processed into canola meal or cake, which is an efficient protein source for dairy herds, livestock, poultry, and also fish. Our farmer tells us that you can use canola when you don't want to test the oil. Their neutral flavor will allow the other ingredients to shine. Now let's get right into it. I like the color. <laughs> and I like the money too. To today's episode of Kilimona Biashara. As you can see, we have a beautiful show lined up for you today. Well, let's talk about this. Cooking oils are some of the most important dietary components in almost all households, but this commodity is quite expensive. So, right at the slopes of Mount Kenya lies Wango Embori Farm that does canola farming. And that is what you're going to explore today, so let's get right into it. Humphrey. Yes. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. This is beautiful. Thank you very much, uh, Linda. Humphrey, now introduce me to this crop. We do various crops, cereals. We've been doing cereals for a long time. And then at one point, uh, we found that it was no longer sustainable to do cereals. And by cereals, I mean barley, wheat, and oat. So we went out looking for a different crop that we could put in our crop rotation program. And we found canola is suitable for that. So it was just for rotation? When we looked at our canola well, we found it's also an income. It gives us better income than cereals. And it's more resilient, especially at this time when the climate is changing and the rains are no longer reliable. And canola can do well even if the rains are not very good. Yes, I've noticed you don't even have drip lines. So how do you start? We propagate canola using seed. In one hectare, we put uh, 3.2 kg of seed. And we use a seed drill, the same seed drill that we use for, putting, for, for planting uh, barley or wheat. Uh, we use about 100 uh, to 150 kg of DAP fertilizer. So the seed drill will put the seed and the fertilizer at the same time. In this particular field, we didn't do any tillage. We did not dig or plow or do something like that. We practice what we call uh, moisture conservation or conservation agriculture. So we killed off the weeds using uh, uh, weed herbicides. And then uh, we came in and planted the seed directly. And because we did not turn the soil, the soil was able to conserve a lot of moisture. And when we planted, the seeds were able to germinate and we took care of the crop. And that is why we all where we are. Talking of taking care of the crop, what are the cultural practices when it comes to canola farming? Once you planted your crop using a seed drill, in, in an instance where you don't have a seed drill, you can broadcast using your hand. Because uh, even if it's on top of the soil, you can you still, still be able to germinate. So after planting, you plant, and then uh, you come and kill the weeds that will come up. Once the seeds have germinated, at around the day 21 to around day 28 there, you'll come and kill the weeds. And then after that, the crop doesn't require a lot of uh, taking care of, but you'll be walking in your field and doing scouting. If you find there are pests or insects, then you come and put an insecticide. But the crop is a heavy feeder. You need to put in foliar fertilizers uh, as you do your sprays. And how is the fertilizer pattern? How long do you put it? The first fertilizer you'll put at planting, I said you'll put 100 to 150 kg of DAP 
Uh, the second spray you'll put, just after putting the herbicide, you'll come in and put some other fertilizer. That is about one, a, one and a half months or so. The other one will come at around three months or so. And your crop would be good to go. Humphrey, so how long does it take before it flowers? It takes about uh, three and a half to four months, depending on the variety. And the crop in this area, because the altitude is a bit high, your crop will be ready for harvesting in about five months. But in drier places, low altitude areas, the crop may be ready for harvesting in three and a half to four months. So speaking of variety, which varieties do you have here and which one really performs well in the country? These are relatively new crop in, uh, in Kenya and especially it's mainly in the highland area. And the varieties, the varieties that we have available, the varieties that we have available are Belinda and Hyola. That is the varieties that we have, but they are adaptable to different uh, altitudes. So they can be planted anywhere. So even in low areas like Limuru, Kericho, they can also grow canola? Yes, they can, they can. Do these plants require pollination because definitely they are flowering? You need to have insects that will do cross-pollination in this crop. And as, as you can see, there are a lot of bees in the field. Humphrey, this is large scale, but can a farmer start with small scale? And I'm just curious, what are the returns on investment? You can still do it in small scale or large scale, depending on uh, the resources that you have. As I said, you may not even use a seed drill. You can still broadcast and have a crop. However, you'll find even getting a drill is not difficult. You can do an acre of canola or a hectare, two and a half acres. You'll get the seed from uh, Agventure, Agventure Kenya Limited. These are certified seed and uh, you are good to go. So aside from certified seeds, what are the key components that a farmer should look out for when they want to venture into canola farming? So prepare your land early and get a fine till then get certified seed from Agventure. When the rains are just about to come, if you are doing uh, rain fed, you come and plant your seeds. When the moisture comes and the, the crop is germinated, then you, you, you come in with a herbicide. And then that will be a blood leaf plus grass herbicide. And when the crop grows, you start feeding your crop. Some people do, do top dressing with a nitrogenous fertilizer. Others feed the crop through folio fertilizers that are sprayed on the crop. So as beautiful as this farm looks, huh, what are some of the pests and diseases affecting canola? There are normally various types of pests that attack canola. One of them being uh, aphids, others are um, diamond black moth, and other kind of caterpillars. So when you, you scout and find that there are insects, you come and spray a suitable insecticide. So when you harvest this and you take it to, uh, to the processor, I'm just curious about the price range of this particular crop. A kg goes for what? The market for canola is good because we do canola under contract with, uh, with Agventure. So there's a guaranteed market. The price is good compared to cereals at this time. This, this season they are buying canola at 50, 50 shillings per kg. If you've done good farming, they give you a bonus of 13 shillings per kg. That's like 60. That is one and a half what we can get times what we can get on cereals. So it's a good alternative crop. So amongst all other crops, why canola? We came into canola planting, uh, whatever, doing canola because we wanted a crop for rotation. When you do, you plant a crop year in, year out, pests and diseases build up and you need to plant a different kind of crop that can break that cycle of pests and diseases. So what do you rotate it with? For example, peas. Well, a cereal may be wheat, uh, wheat, canola, peas rotation. In some areas here, people also rotate with uh, potatoes and uh, maize. Is canola a perennial crop or how many times do you reap from it? It's an annual crop. Actually, it completes its cycle in about six months. So you plant it uh, and then after six months, you harvest everything, you have to replant. Is it not expensive when it's an annual crop? It is it expensive. At the end of the day, uh, if you look at the cost of growing canola and what you get from it, it's quite, the gross margins are very good. So what are the qualities needed by the processor when you're taking this canola to them? Well, you have to make sure that the field is clean from seeds, uh, from weeds, so that your final produce is not contaminated with, with weeds. You also have to make sure that the crop all the ponds or the seeds are not damaged by, by insect pests. Those are the two main issues. And then you have to harvest the canola at the right stage when it's, it's dry, so that it's not immature and uh, you lose quality on quality. This canola is quite beautiful. Is it that the yellow it is, the better the outcome? Like you can see over here, there is a pond that is not uh, opened. When it opens, it gives you that flower. 
And when the flower starts processing its cells, it gives you this pod. This pod will grow, and inside this pod you'll have the canola seed. They're just like cabbage seed. And as I told you, these are a member of the cabbage family. Oh yeah, it actually looks like it comes from the kills family. Yes. So in like Nanectia, how much can you get roughly? Well, you'd have about uh, maybe 700 pots. That will give you... Uh, I'll not give a very fair estimate on that. But I can give you what you'd get in a hectare. In a very good crop, you'll have something like 1.5 tons per hectare. Uh, if you take good care of your crop, you'll have two tons. You can get even three tons. For a new farmer who's intending to venture into canola farming, how can they source for the market? Is there a market in Kenya? Market is not an issue because this is contract farming. All farmers who grow canola contract with adventure. So there's already market for that. And there are contracted prices, so there are no market uncertainties. Is the farmer gets the seed and takes care of his crop and the, the market is guaranteed and the payment is guaranteed. So Humphrey, what do you like best about canola? I like the color. <laughs> and I like the money too. <laughs> Where do we go to next from here? Our crop is mature mm -hmm. and the pods are dry. We'll harvest the pod and take them to the factory where they'll take the seeds in the pod and process canola oil. This is interesting. I thought it's the flower itself that is yellow that is harvested. No, it's not the, the flowers but the pods. The pods have uh, seed in them and that is where we crush and get uh, canola oil. Have the best experience extracting canola oil. Wow, let's go. Wow, let's do this. And just like any other ISO certified processors, their hygiene here is top notch. So we have to wash our hands, sanitize before we get to the factory. So let's do this. for the factory. Now let's go and extract some canola oil. Let's go. Evans. Hi. How are you? I'm very okay. I can't hear you well. Would you remove your mask? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, uh, now that's it. Now what happens here? Uh, actually, this is the end of our processing. Uh -huh. This is where we do 
packaging. Uh -huh. But um, for the product to get here, yes. you understand we have to get the raw materials from the farm. Uh -huh. So what happens is that we get the raw materials from the farm, that is canola seed. Yes. Uh, but just before it gets into the factory, mm -hmm. we do the, our quality checks. Yes. Uh, we have got our lab. Mm -hmm. So after the sample has been taken, we go to, we, we do our analysis. Mm -hmm. If it goes through, yeah. uh, we now receive through our weigh bridge. Mm -hmm. So we weigh it and then take it to the offloading bay mm -hmm. where we now receive the canola seed. Mm -hmm. So when we receive the canola seed, we receive it into our silo. Mm -hmm now ready for processing. Evan, so when you say processing begins there, what does processing entails from the beginning up to here? Now that we have the seed in our silos, what we do is uh, we have got our three press machines where we do our extraction. It's, uh, it's mechanical, it's purely mechanical, there's no additions. So what we do is uh, through our augers, uh, an auger is just a machine that is used to convey the material from the silo to the three machines. So through the auger, we deliver to our to the three machines. Now in the machines, we just pressurize the canola seed. Uh, and then the product that we get from the, the three press machine is oil and canola cake. So what you see here is one of the products that we get from the canola seed. When you say cake, what does that mean? It's one of the products we use that for animal feeds and then of course oil is what you see what we package for human consumption tell me what are the cultural practices here what are the qualities needed by the time you get to the packaging stage after we've gotten our oil from the rest of the process now we have it in the packaging house we have got our control sample uh, that help us check uh, mainly the color so, and the only additive we do here is uh, we do fortification, that's a government requirement. Um, and then of course, we also check the quality of our bottles, the cooking, and um, the whole batching process up to packaging. So from here, where is it taken? After batching, we again batch into our boxes and then into our store. So from the store, that is where we start doing our distribution to the the shops and then to the consumers. Wow, you've seen the entire process of processing canola oil. Now look at this. These are some of the products they produce and here is the finished product. This is canola oil chili infused, but well, I'm not the expert here. The expert is here. Hello. Hi, Linda. Tell me about Adventure. I'm happy that you decided to visit us uh, today. Mm -hmm. Adventure is a group of farmers that are very committed to the issue of sustainability of their farms. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have been in conservation agriculture for the last 13 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, out of this farming process, they have been able to realize quite a lot of benefits that they have decided to share with the farmers just as a way of giving back to the community. And uh, conservation agriculture, as we said, uh, and the farmer told you in the farm, is anchored on three principles. The principle of uh, minimum tillage, uh, soil cover, and also crop rotation. So is canola really gaining popularity? Linda, one of the biggest challenges facing our farmers is the issue of monocropping growing the same crop over and over and over again until our soils become depleted. And secondly, the issue of the soil health is increasingly becoming an issue. And crop rotation uh, is a very uh, potent weapon in ensuring that the soil health is improved and the diseases are minimized and the pests are also minimized. So here in Adventure, we reach out to the farmers through training, through a department referred to as the Center of Excellence for Crop Rotation. And uh, the message taken to the farmers is on rotate and preserve. 
give you the moisture in your soil. Jason, maybe you can just tell me how these farmers will benefit from this. In canola farming, we assure the farmer of uh, three major things. One, the issue of uh, the knowledge and technology transfer. Knowledge that has been tried, uh, tested and tried, and uh, you have agronomists who help you and hold your hand to grow canola. So, commercially viable with a ready market, and it becomes a win for the farmers. Yo, so anytime you see me with this, you know it's about to go down. <laughs> Faith! Yes! Tell me! Hi, Lydia, how are you? Hello! You've cooked without me. Don't worry, you have a taste of it. Mm -hmm. I'm here with my best kitchen companion. companion the healthiest <laughs> oil for your family uh -huh. from Pure Mountain Farmware. Mm -hmm. I'm cooking my egg with the chili infused one. Oh, there are two types. Yeah, there are two types. Mm -hmm. uh, there's this one, which is the pure one. Uh -huh has nothing inside but uh, this other one is the chili infused one ah so this is another variety it has a lot of chili yeah wow okay there's a ratio for that mm -hmm. yeah so what's the difference if it has a lot of chili it has a lot of nutrients or what mm, not yeah. really though this one has more antioxidants uh -huh. because of the and chilies uh -huh. and uh, this also both of them have a lot of omega-3 6 and nine very good for your health. Wow. A lot of vitamin A's and E's. All those omegas I want. You've prepared yeah. some already? Yeah, I've already prepared some. Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe we can wait for this one so okay. that we can have a taste. <laughs> yeah, it's very good. Asante? Yes. Oh. <laughs> okay, so we go try this. Yeah. Without chili, uh -huh. this one is with chili. Okay. Yeah, very delicious. Let me start with this one that has no chili. So you can just use my fork. Yeah, just use the fork. Okay. Have a taste. Mm. Hey, Another one will do. Some more. Mm. Okay. Mm. It is quite nice. To the point. I don't feel the oil in my mouth, so it's pretty... It's low in saturated fats, mm -hmm. very high in unsaturated fats. Wow, I can feel that already. Yeah. I test this one too. Yeah, this is now the chili one. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, let's try this with yeah. the chili. It has that, that chili taste. Mm. Mm. I actually like the chili <laughs> one better. Yeah, both have different mm, tastes mm, mm, mm. for different. So you've said people. all those omegas, mm. and what again? It has omega three, mm -hmm. omega six, mm -hmm. omega nine. Let's just say it has all the and omegas. And vitamin A, vitamin A. Mm -hmm. So the most delicious and nutritious oil. Thank you so much. Welcome, Linda. I'm totally impressed. Welcome, dear. Wow, I cannot yeah. say it any better. Faith has said that it's high on omega-3, omega-6, omega-9. What else would you need? I mean, wow. I hope you've enjoyed the show Canola Farming. We have extracted canola and you have seen we, we have prepared it so well. So until next time, my name is Linda Koske. See you again on Friday, same time next week.